Three, two, one. Sweet. So, Whitney, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. Thank you for coming on. It's been such a blessing to have you thus far. I mean, we just had a really good conversation for the past 15 minutes. So, yes. yeah, thank you for agreeing yeah. to it. I'm trying to pick up your accent. Like, I need to pick up the South African Oh, you have to. So well, like, that? basically, all you, like, yes, all you have to say is, I wear a brew. What is it? I wear a brew. I wear a brew? There we go. I wear a brew. That's like, you know, like, <laughs> am, am, Americans... It's sort of Australian. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Americans are very, the, the, um, Americans are like, everything's bro, yeah, bro, you know, you know, yeah. like that, like we brew, bro. everything's just brew, yeah. you know, I don't know, it just feels so much more laid back for us, I don't know, but, I like it, I, th I think, yeah, speaking of South Africa, why do you have such huge spiders, and are you okay, can you still see the spider, that's been, it's, like if every 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 I don't even every know. time I look at it, I'm like I don't think this is fine, because so basically I, I posted up I posted up a story just to tell Whitney over Instagram that while recording this, there's also a giant spider about that big stuck in the curtain, but it's 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 on the curtain and then there's like a sheet over the curtain and he's in between it. I, I was afraid. Oh my god! I was afraid to even get on the phone or on the right. on on the video with you because I'm afraid it's gonna <laughs> just <laughs> randomly like come like my, come out of your camera. Here. Yeah. Never. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, should I even really talk to this guy? And it it, it, it actually makes me think now. Like, I've been podcasting every day for the past like four days, and I'm like, how long has that little shit been there? Like, been in there. how long has he been there for? Oh, just yeah. listening to like what's going on. I don't know, like if he attacks you, like look, you're on your own, bro. I oh, dude, if straight up, if if <laughs> if he attacks me, you're gonna hear the highest pitched scream come out of me, oh, and that'll be it. I, I'll scream. yeah, it'll probably be the best I'll podcast scream. I've ever done if that were to happen. <laughs> but for now, for now, I think I'm cool. Podcaster dies on the show. Imagine, from a imagine, of yeah. Why, why you'll never see Josh again? Yeah. That's gonna suck. <laughs> you can't blame it on Josh anymore. There we go, because he's, he's just dead. gone, so you can blame someone else now. Yeah. <laughs> but Whitney, I, I really wanted to get into like, I think it would be really dope just to kind of give everyone a chance that's listening or watching on what it is you do. I mean, I've been I've been following you for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. I think, it, yeah, it's, it's been quite a while that I've been following and like, I know you heavily involved in entrepreneurship and in fitness and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I just want to give a breakdown as to what it is you do. Mm -hmm. We can kind of go into that. Yeah. So I'm, I started out as a personal trainer and I was mainly doing in-person clients. Um, and then I made, you know, and I competed and I just got really like fitness was always my passion. It was the one thing that, you know, after trying certain careers, sales and marketing, mm -hmm. and trying acting and modeling. So I was like, you know, the one content that I would do regardless whether it was whether I was getting paid or not is fitness so yeah. I want to make that my career um, Dope. and I just dove into it head first and kind of um, transpired it, basically the events transpired to where I transitioned to an online coach um, I still have a couple of clients in person but I help now a ton of clients across you know the country and internationally on um, getting their fitness, you know, workouts, diets, but also their gut health, the mental health aspect. You know, there's so many other holistic components to fitness mm. beyond just workouts and diets mm. and calories in, calories out. This is the, the moves that you can do to get a booty. There's so much more. It's a full encompassing thing. And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about fitness is and nutrition and health and the holistic aspect of it is I really struggled for a long time with chronic pain, you know, depression, yeah. anxiety, um, digestive issues, skin issues. So I just, I, I really had to figure it out for myself, mm. what worked, um, and how to get the best quality of life in a holistic way. Cause you can't just take a pill for everything and, um, you got to figure it out yourself. And, and I, I wanted to share all those tools with people, you know, that were, there's so many fad diets and quick fixes so many and of those. pills and that people are, yeah, and it's based on appearance and it's like, mm. that's not what it's all about. If you don't feel good, you're not going to, it doesn't matter how good you look, you're going to hate your life yeah. or you're not going to feel, you know, you, like what kind of a quality of life is that? So, 
Yeah. That's kind of why I made it my mission to reach more people and and help coach people through just that learning process of getting yeah. there. Yeah, because that's what like looking at your profile and your photos and stuff like what's so different and so intriguing about what it is that you do is that you seem like really focused on every aspect of fitness, right? So like you said, it's not just about like having a good booty, you know, or like being skinny or being fit or whatever. Like there's, there, there's so many aspects from like mental health and like diet wise and not, like not just saying to people cut out sugar, but actually saying to them, look, this is why, this is how you substitute. This is what like, I know you've done quite a few videos and stuff right. on cooking and <clears throat> like cooking shows and, you know, bringing that whole aspect in. Right. And just making things fun and interesting, you know, and kind of giving people yeah. the appeal that they need in a really informative way. Um, and not just making it, mm -hmm. hey guys, my name's Josh, and today I'm going to show you how to grow your biceps by two centimeters. You know, I'm like, dude, fuck off. You know, like, right. tell me why, right. tell me how. It's like, like, you gotta have fun with exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And you gotta have fun with it. It's okay. You know, you can be fun, you can be sexy, you can be sassy, you can be. A badass who can be a fucking mess. I am all of those yeah. things. <laughs> so it's like coming from that, you know, coming from that place of like, I'm not a perfect person and I'm far from it, but these are the things that I have used, the tools that I've used to help, you know, yeah. help improve a little bit. And then and it, coming to acceptance of that kind yeah. of imperfection. And then, you know, knowing like, what's realistic and what's not for your body. You know, it's not realistic to just deprive yourself of everything. If you have a craving, you have to find a way to scratch the itch. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're, you know, so, so kind of embracing the imperfection, but then just implementing the tools yeah. and the discipline to improve your situation. And just kind of being human, you know, that's what's like so crucial is that like I've, I've been into fitness for quite a long time. I swam very competitively as a swimmer. And then from that got into weightlifting and went into all of that and I made a lot of friends in powerlifting and in bodybuilding and all that stuff and it's such a it's such a dedicated minute by minute hour to hour kind of focus that they have and that's what I love right. about that industry and you yeah. know l looking at like like a real lifestyle yeah, it's it's crazy <clears throat> it, it, it's crazy how motivated and dedicated uh, people can become um, and you look at other aspects of their life as well and because they've got such good schedules and such good you know health benefits put in place the rest of their life starts benefiting as well and it, I mean it, look it, it, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that every person has to go be a bikini model every person has to be a bodybuilder just find the level that works for you you know like find that level that pushes you and motivates you and changes the rest of your life as well changes the rest of your day as well yeah it carries over into the other aspects of your life. Absolutely. Exactly. And how did how did you so like like I'm not trained in or studied in anything fitness wise. So like I can only say so much, you know, and kind of like you know pay attention to things and then kind of ask questions. And like the way that you've been really different with it, I think, and what's been really cool to see is that you're actually really strong. Like you actually have. A physique you know what I'm saying like I've got like guy friends that like watch your videos and see your photos and stuff and they're like dude I need to be as strong as this chick you know like and and that's what that's that's what's so powerful about it right is that it's it, it's not just like you know I, I hate to say it but it's not just a exactly exactly it's not just oh you know yeah. great ass or oh, great this like all those you know pieces of shit that comment that kind of stuff you know it, it, it's actually like right. I wouldn't fuck with you. Not a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, yeah. it's that whole aspect of like actually being strong. You know, so how did, as, right. as a woman, like the question that I'm wanting to get to is like, as a woman, how did you one physically get to that? And two mentally, how, like, mm -hmm. you know, cause you, you don't just have a physique that's not just good to look at. You also have a very practical physique where you're strong and you fit and you're healthy. Like, how did you do that, dude? You know, like everyone just wants to look good and you came out and made both possible. Yeah, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. I, I, because I came from this place of um, chronic pain, mm -hmm. um, tr a lot of tra trauma as a child, as going through life, you know, certain things happen to you. 
that can make you feel powerless, yeah. right? So I think part of it was trying to find a way to strengthen myself physically. I knew it was going to carry over mentally, emotionally, and my confidence, all that stuff. I wanted to get my power back. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because they say that a lot about a lot of fitness athletes or um, competitive sports or, um, you know, whether they're competing in uh, fitness competitions or whatever. It's usually because it stems from a place of, wanting to get your power back in some yeah, way, right? Yeah. So I did want the physique, of course. I'm like, I'm vain, I want to be hot. Yeah, for sure, everyone wants but, to be hot. And, and I, yeah. yeah, and I wanted, I wanted to get up and see, who doesn't, right? And um, it's a great side effect of, of training your body, yeah. uh, looking great. Um, but I did, I trained as um, kind of as a competitive athlete to get on the stage and do the bikini okay. competitions and pose and all that stuff. Um, and I had to change the way I was training just in order to just sculpt my physique the way I wanted to. Mm. I thought I had to do that, right? I thought I had to go, you know, only traditional bodybuilding style, but I actually, it didn't work well for me or my body or my confidence. So I got up on stage, I looked great, I won, I got my pro card, whatever. But as soon as I got back into kickboxing, you know, training for Spartan, like real high intensity training, yeah. um, <clears throat> boxing kind of stuff mma it's like that is when your body actually really does come into its i was i look better when i'm training that way than when i did for just like only my physique I see. and so once i realized that and i had a, had a way to compare the two it was like there's no comparison it's like strengthen yourself strengthen your body the physique will come yeah you know yeah. the physique will come but um i've, I've i'm grateful to have both knowledge of both i know how to sculpt i know how to get your physique to where you want it to be but i also know how to strengthen your body functionally so that you feel more powerful and just your confidence yeah. right so um i think it's super important that's cool because it it, it 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 kind of like branches it kind of branches that gap between like guys and girls in the gym right usually you see girls coming in and you know it's all about how you look and it's about the cardio and like all the bum exercises and the guys are in there trying to lift as heavy right. and be as strong as possible and prove a point, you know, like, and it kind of marries the two and kind of right. shows you that, dude, fitness doesn't give a shit about what gender you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, both both can be strong, both can, work, both can be lean, both can be healthy and, you know, feel just as good as the other one. Totally. So, with... I remember going into the weight room and kind of being, like, when... I feel like now fitness is a lot yeah. more common. Yeah. Um, but I remember going into the weight room and really like pushing heavy weight and kind of being like the only chick in there sometimes. Mm. Like, What's going on? You mm. know, like girls are timid to, and, but now it's cool to see women really getting in there, getting yeah. after it. Like I think pushing, it's sick. Like, pushing the weight. It's like that. Yeah, it's fucking bad. Yeah, it's cool. And guys look at it and respect yeah. it. Yeah. Like they respect it, you know? So a lot of girls I think have been timid to like, oh, I don't want to be like too manly or you know show you it's it's like you're lifting o face yeah <laughs> when you get to that last <laughs> yeah you're like, yeah, yeah you know, no one wants to look like it's like... actually yeah but it's actually it's actually really attractive when mm -hmm. you are you are not afraid to show like you know you're you're struggling to get there and you're working really hard and you're pushing for something yeah um, I think it's becoming a little, a lot more accepted as a really attractive thing now, which is yeah. Great. I'm glad, I'm glad you say that because there's, there's a lot of girls that listen, especially a lot of teenage girls, and I think having that kind of knowledge that kind of you know branches out of what you're seeing every day, you know, the same old, same old, you know, like, and I can, I can, my heart goes out to girls because it's almost so competitive when it comes to like the social, like. Um, social media aspect of like there's there's people out there and I feel really strongly about this but like there's there's people out there that are putting out programs and are putting out workouts but they're purely doing it to show people look how good I look you know what I'm saying and it's like you right. know this is how I look sex that I do mm, look and all the comments are oh my word you're so great I'm word you're so hot I'm word you're so whatever you like da, 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 da. and I'm like yeah but who is this actually helping you know is it is it is it that aspect of like, right. all you're doing is creating a standard for someone that they now feel obliged to try and reach? Or are you putting something in place that, right. you know, informs people and gives to a positive, yeah. Share, and yes, yeah. 
Totally. And I think I, I, I think yeah, you've been really good at doing that. When you get into social media, well, I think, and I didn't used to be, and I yeah. still. Work <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes it's like it's easy to just to, to post thirst traps. Oh, for sure. Like, sweet, I get a ton of engagement or whatever. But finding ways to make it useful and like and really add, you know add some value yeah. to your followers' lives and really like give them some yeah. to, to try to share the information. Yeah. Um, instead of just make them feel like they have to compare themselves to all the hard work that you've put yeah. in. It's like, they just see a picture, they don't they don't realize all the struggle it's taken to get there, yeah. right? So trying to share the part of that struggle, I think it's important. That's cool, yeah, and I think, look, like, I mean, by all means, to any girls out there, if you want to post those straps, you want to post, post whatever you want. I, I honestly couldn't give a shit, like, I'm all for it, I support you. But if you have the chance to do something positive, and to influence someone in in, in yeah. a good way, then I mean, geez, you you know, you couldn't ask to give any more to someone, you know. But looking look yeah. looking at that, and I'm I'm glad you said the whole thirst trap thing, right? So you have a massive following on social media, and a lot of people aspire to you and look up to you and everything. When you were younger, right, like going into this career and going into this whole thing and being such a presence on social media, I'm like. I'm pretty sure there must have been people that weren't happy with it and weren't supportive and like weren't kind of backing you in this whole thing, you know, and like not liking it too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I grew up in a very conservative religious um, background, yeah. right? And I, I actually grew up in a small town, Boise, Idaho. And so I really had to, I mean, I guess just even just with the religion alone, I had to I had to figure out, okay, like I, I had to listen to my instincts and my intuition. I'm like, you know, I don't know that this fits with me, right? So yeah. I don't know that this is who really lines up with who I am. And as I got older, I got, I realized it more and more to the point where I was like, okay, I got to completely remove myself from, I moved across the country, wow. you know, I got to remove myself from this community, from all of this, you know, and I'm grateful that I, not to disrespect the religion that I yeah, no, no, right, no, for sure, I yeah, that way. How, uh, yeah, but however, it's there's too much fear and guilt and repression, and I knew that didn't sit well with yeah. me. I had other dreams and bigger dreams, and I wanted to pursue them, and they were definitely not approved by that kind of community. Yeah. Um, and so I had to completely separate myself from it, figure out what I believed. I went through a very like experimental phase where I was just like, what, what, <laughs> yeah. what, what is the world about? Yeah. You know, what, what does this drug do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely went through the whole gamut of just like, what have I been missing? And then mm. I got to figure out, okay, this is what now sits right with me. This um, feels more in line with who I am. Um, and this is, and, and trying to find, go into the back into that balance. But knowing that people didn't approve, like the, the community I came from didn't approve. A lot of my family members didn't approve. People talk shit. You know, there was rumors that go around, like whatever she's doing in LA, yeah. you know, like I had rumors about yeah. Morningstar. I mean, it was crazy. Really? And, um, Oh yeah, like so. So I had you have to learn how to um, stand alone yeah. because and stand strong in like your own truth. And it's not easy because it's easy to kind of bend to the pressures of what everybody else wants for you. Yeah. And I think that's why you know I had to be away in a, from a physical proximity to that one you need to get away from those influences that are trying to hold you back that's why you got you to remove toxic people from your life um and just hold true to the fact that you're a good person yeah. so it yeah. doesn't matter what they think about you or how they judge your behavior it's like i'm a good person i treat people well I, let's get back to the basics i treat mm. people kindly mm. you know i don't steal i work hard i, I don't i don't feel like i'm entitled to anything other than what I work for. Yeah. Um, so just like getting back to the character and standing strong in the fact that like, I'm a good person no matter whether you approve of what I do or not. You yeah. Know? And that's, that's it's tricky, at, at, you know, looking at family play such an important role, right? And like, just in being like a pillar in your life and people that have some form of influence in the decisions that you make and in, you know, the person that you become and in, you know, like, just your view of the world. Um, 
you know, they are there for crucial, you know, years of development. Uh, emotionally, especially, you know, like in your teenage years and stuff. So to kind of have to overcome that kind of thing is a big obstacle for someone have to, you know, to, to, to have to move on from. So to be so solid in yourself and so confident in, 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 in what you believe and what you want to pursue, that you overcome that obstacle is a huge factor. Um, to overcome that and still get it done, I'm like, dude, I, you know, take my hat off to you, well done, you know, so like, there's, there's, there's people everywhere that have to face that aspect, you know, whether it's a religion thing or whether it's a, like, you know, a, a, a difficult family situation or maybe even not having a family, that kind of situation is very real, you know, so I think, you know. Yeah. I, th I think one big part of it was I realized, okay, I didn't have to be defiant about it. I, mm. um, and I have a really great relationship with my family now, yep. but I think they came to the point where they realized like, okay, she's always there for us. She never asks us for anything. She never asks us for, you know, to bail her out of her own messes that she makes. Yeah. Um, she's, she continues to be there for us, you know, um, continues to love her family mm. and, so she takes care of herself. What can you do at that point? Exactly. Like, let her be. Yeah. And now my family has, you know, come into this acceptance of like, she's going to do what she's going to do. And she's actually a great person. And even though there's certain life choices that we don't approve mm -hmm. of, um, she's, she's, she's good people. So I think that's all you can do is just continue being good people on the inside. And then like the rest kind of falls away. I think the biggest thing though is like, coming from a uh, religious background like that is like the shame yeah. that comes along with at first when you're shamed for that and you're outcast from that uh, for being a different way. Mm. Sometimes it's hard not to believe it sometimes. Yeah. So you can internalize that, that shame of like, Oh my God, am I bad? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. am I bad? And it, you kind of question that and that can get super toxic. You know, yeah. it's one of the things that I had, I still work on in therapy is that in that, you know, that in printed shame that comes along with breaking away from breaking a mold. what you were, told yeah. you were supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Like you are supposed to be this way. And if you're not, you're bad. Yeah. So, so it's still, you know, those are, those have lasting effects. I'm not free from that. Yeah. You know, I still work, work on that stuff, but you have to know that it's something that you have to work through. It's, it's going to be a trial that you have to overcome, but not to cave into it. Right? Yeah. And is, is like, is, is that like religious aspect of your family's life? Is that still very much a real thing? Are they, are they still in that small town in, in the same like religious belief? I would say, um, like 50, 50, like there's yeah. some that are like not as active in the church as they were. And then there's some that are still super gung ho. And, and to be honest, I'm really glad, like, I'm glad that they have it in their lives because mm. for them, it's this great support of light and love and faith and hope. And I'm like, shit, do you, you know, that's yeah, great. For sure. Like yeah. those are great. Those are great things to have. I would never want to take that away from anybody. So I don't bash, you know, organized religion. I think it's just, it depends on who you are as a person. Mm. It's like finding your own faith, finding your own higher power. That's what I had to come to. It was like, okay, this belief doesn't necessarily sit well with me, but where is my higher power in general? Yeah. And like really learning how to tap into that and like, um, you know, still having a spiritual aspect to Yeah, who for you sure. Are doesn't mean that it has to be and I, what anybody else dictates that it needs and to I be. And I think also just like doing you, you know, like there was, you know, you have your path and you have your destiny or what, whatever it is you want to call it and just what you want, like what you want to achieve, you know, like that's what life is here for, you know, you, you're going to be here to be like, hey, I think this is my purpose. I think this is my passion. I'm going to go do it. So for someone to be like, right. no, you can't, is kind of like, wait, what, what, what? Like, you know, I've like. To, right. to, to right. find your passion and to find your reason is a huge deal to like, you know, have that in the bag because yeah. so many people don't find it and so many people put it off and pretend like they don't have it. But so right. you came from, and you're not doing any favors by not sharing your life. Exactly. You can make such a difference in the world. Just, you know, going for that, you know, and like pursuing that. Mm -hmm. So, so you came out of the small town and moved to LA. And there's, there's so many like perceptions about LA, 
right? I've always wanted to go to LA. I've always wanted to be there. I think it's a great town. So many people tell me differently. My thing, and I'm, I have to tread lightly in like how I word this, right? So a, a big thing, and we kind of spoke about this earlier, in that a big thing out of LA mm -hmm. is... Actually, wait, I'll ask it as a question from the get-go. Is the whole thing of sugar daddies and shit, is that a big thing in LA? Oh, yeah. It is? Because yes. I, like, I know that it's a big thing in yeah. Dubai, and I've, like, heard of it a little bit in, like, London, a little bit in Cape Town, to this whole, like, you know, dating a super rich dude, and, you know? And, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's right. guys dating super rich women and doing the same thing, but, like... You know, if, if that's how you kind of want to go on with your life, then cool, you know, it, 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 it kind of creates... Yeah, for me, I'm like, more power to you. I mean, fair, I guess, like, you know, like... like that's a, it's a method. It's a method of getting what you want. Yeah, like, fair, like, respect. I think I learned, I learned early on, um, when I was in a relationship, it wasn't even a sugar daddy situation, but I was in a relationship where my partner had, um, was really taking care of the finances and yeah. I didn't really have to work and he was a great person it was a great partnership even then I when I knew I wanted to get out of the relationship and that I had outgrown it or that yeah you know, right I was like fuck I have completely been depending on this person yeah. who was actually not a bad guy imagine if you're with this like a sugar daddy situation where the guy treats you like shit like you're a slave and you right? feel like you can't me, leave it was, just, it's a, it was about three yeah, like to me, it was just about freedom. Like, I I promised myself from then on, I was like, I will never depend on anyone ever yeah. for my financial stability, my livelihood, ever again. So I I left. I worked three jobs. I did bottle service till five in the morning. I woke up Shut. at seven to do sales on the phone, and then I was tr studying to get my. Um, personal training certification and I worked around the clock just to kind of dig myself out of that hole that I created respect for myself. because you get lazy well done you get lazy and you rest on your laurels and then what you don't have a fucking resume yeah. you don't have savings you don't have shit to your name and then what are you gonna do and I see these girls that um and I'm not judging them but I no, see it's, look, it, it, it's not they do the, it's not judgment at all it's just you know, looking at what's happening in the world, looking it's at like, concerning. yeah, looking it's at like concerning. what gets put like, in I front of you. Well, and, and it's like, you see people that get into these situations that seem great. And then all of a sudden they're 45 and nobody wants to be their sugar daddy anymore. Yeah. And then what the fuck do you have? You don't have a resume. You don't have a skill because you've been lazy. I'm like, at least take some money and put it in savings. <laughs> at like, least take the money this person's willing to give you and invest it, you know? Like, at least, you know, have them buy you a bag, sell the bag and put the money in savings. There we go. So that you have some sort of cushion, like just be smart yeah. about it. That's my thing is just be smart about it. Don't not have a backup plan. Don't, you know, because you don't want to have to, to rely on somebody else for your survival because then you just end up compromising the, what, who you really want to be, your own freedom. It's like you're a freaking slave, right? Yeah. So... I think it's really important and I ever since then I'm really glad that I had that lesson and that I, I had that just the shit scared out of me because I was like oh my god what am I gonna do and I I from then on developed a work ethic that was just crazy and to this day I am always working I work really really hard yeah. I'm constantly trying to better myself better my business and thank god I have that skill now because um you know, I've been able to build something that I can be really proud of, mm -hmm. right? And, and like feel fulfilled in my work because I built it and I worked really fucking hard for it. Yeah. And to have the pride that like you did that and you did it by yourself and you didn't do it with anybody else's help or handout, right? Yeah. So no, there's something that would be my only message to these girls, just like just have a <laughs> plan. Like or, you know, like, if you don't have to work nine to five, then cool. Then, like, start a little side yeah. business. Do something that makes you feel um, alive and, like, like you're a contributing member of society. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, 